Good evening, everyone. My name is Lydia Oguang, and I'm a member of the programming team here at TIFF Cinematech. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you to tonight's screening of Haile Garima's Teza, introduced by filmmaker and producer Alison Duke. To begin, we would like to acknowledge that tonight's event is taking place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat. We are very grateful indeed to have the opportunity to work in this community. On behalf of TIFF, I would like to thank our lead sponsor, Bell, our major sponsors, RBC, L'Oreal Paris, and Visa, and TIFF Cinematech's public supporters, Ontario Creates, and the Canada Council for the Arts. And thanks as well to Classic FM Radio and Zoomer Radio, our program sponsors. As a charitable organization, we would also like to thank our donors and members for making TIFF's year-round programming, educational, and community outreach initiatives possible. Um, and I do want to apologize. We were hoping to screen a 35 millimeter print tonight due to unforeseen circumstances. Um, we were forced to present a digital presentation, but I know you folks will enjoy the film all the same. So thank you for coming. Um, the series Resistance and Revolution, the cinema of Haile Garima, is a co-presentation between TIFF and three esteemed partners, the Power Plant Contemporary Art Gallery, the Art Gallery of Ontario, and Hot Docs. The five film mini retrospective celebrates the remarkable filmmaker and complements two of the Power Plant's winter 2019 exhibitions. And you can find more information about all five of the screenings in the series and the Power Plant's uh, complementary exhibitions at thepowerplant.org. Um, and I would now like to welcome to the stage Kendra Campbell. She is the TD Curator of Education Fellow at the Power Plant Contemporary Art Gallery, and she'll say a few words before we begin. Welcome, Kendra. Thank you, Lydia. The Power Plant extends sincere thanks to the TD Ready Commitment for supporting the Power Plant's entire winter 2019 season, including this series of five films by Haile Garima. To introduce this film this evening, we're very pleased to have Alison Duke here with us. Alison Duke is an artistic activist, award-winning filmmaker, and passionate producer committed to the Canadian visual art form. Recently, she co-wrote and co-produced the television documentary Mr. Jane and Finch for CBC Docs. Duke also directed the television special The Cool Black North for Rogers City TV. Please join me in welcoming Alison Duke. Wow, what a nice introduction. Wow. Uh, I'm, I'm, you have to excuse, I have a little bit of a cold I'm coming down with, so I'll try to um, not make this too long of a discussion or presentation, but just make my way through my notes about uh, Heli Garima. Uh, he's one of my favorite uh, filmmakers, so that's why if I get a little choked up, excuse that as well. Uh, so I just uh, want to, before I begin, just thank uh, the AGO Power Plant, Hot Dogs, and TIFF, uh, Kendra, and yourself for also putting this together. It's such a, you know, forward-thinking um, program because he's such a stalwart in the filmmaking community. And uh, also because of the times we live in now, we need to hear more voices in cinema like Hali Karima. So I'll begin. Uh, so just in case, how many people saw the whole five films? There's a couple up there. Um, and also, uh, I'll just get to this anyways. All right. So Hali Garima is a 73-year-old director born in Ethiopia. How many Ethiopians in the house? Yeah, I know there's a contingency here. Okay, his father was a dramatist and playwright, and his mother was a school teacher. And I'm just putting that out there because I think that's important to know when you're watching someone's film, their background, where they came from, and, and so that you can have a sort of like a conversation about uh, in your head about when you're watching these images, maybe his, how he grew up, what influenced him. And I wonder, like, when I think about his films, what his, what his parents thought of him becoming a leader of the of a group of elite black filmmakers attending UCLA in the 60s, collectively known as the LA Rebellion. Does anybody know about the LA Rebellion? Not too many. 
Well, they're a group of filmmakers um, that went to UCLA and uh, went to their film program, but they really didn't go to any classes. They sort of developed their own dogma of making films. And names of some of the people that went there are include Charles Barnett, Killer of Sheep, Julie Dash, Daughters of the Dust, Zaina Irene Davis, uh, who made a wonderful film called Com- Compensation. And he was a leader among these visionaries. And he's including himself being a, a visionary. That means uh, that's like a great accomplishment. I've met them all in my lifetime as a filmmaker, and they're just um, amazing people to talk to. Um, so as the name suggests, the LA Rebellion, uh, they, they went to film school, but they did not go to classes. And they resisted, they wanted to resist the power structures circulating within the school to create their own film pedagogy. They were influenced by Latin American films and filmmakers, Italian neorealism, European art films, and the emerging cinema of Africa. And the members of this distinguished group went on to make seminal films about blackness in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and still making work today. In a career spanning five decades, Garima has directed many gems that you've seen in the series for the two people up there, <laughs> and also became a film professor at the University of Howard, um, or Howard University, which probably made his parents very proud. <laughs> Arguably, some believe that his best film was um, Sankofa in, in 1993. It's a historically inspired dramatic tale of the African resistance to slavery. And at the time uh, when he released this film, he decided to self-distribute, self-distribute it because uh, the major s- distributors scoffed at it. Um, and that was a shame. They didn't think that it would make any money. And, um, but the gamble really paid off for him because people lined up around the blocks to see it. And uh, he made about $3 million at the box office um, back in uh, 1993. And today it's a, a cult classic. I think that's not too shabby for back in the day. So on to Teza, uh, which is probably his most decorated film to date, pleasing film festival audiences and critics around the world. It won the Special Jury Prize and Best Picture, um, Best Screenplay Award at the 2008 Venice Film Festival, the Golden Stallion at the FESPACO um, 2009 African Film Festival, uh, the Dio, oh, sorry, Dior AFT Award, the highest audience award at the 2009 Rotterdam Film Festival, and uh, and just a little bit of reference for Canadian filmmakers, Denise Villeneuve's Incendies won it a year later um, in 2010. It also won the Golden Unicorn and Best Feature Film at the 2009 France International Film Festival, and of course I saw it at TIFF when it played here at uh, two, in 2009. I'm not sure if it played in this cinema. I think it played in the other cinema. I'm not sure. We should find that out. <laughs> and it was a treat to watch. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not really, I'm kind of surprised, um, you know, meeting uh, Hallie Garuma, like for such a generous and good nature person to be around, he's really a sweetheart, um, his films are full of rage. And it's not the useless pent up rage that services one ego, but it's sort of like a methodical explosive rage that he just splashes across the screen to stab you in the heart. Our hearts are his target because he knows, like all true masters of cinema, that that is where hopes go to die. The subjugation of black bodies in the collective and individual memory of people, communities, and societies, fighting for justice, equality, and a leg up, proved to be the ground zero for the rage in his movies. And Teza is no different. You could feel the hopes die in the clothing, the dirt, the hazy sunsets. And... For all of this rage, I don't think he believes the world is hopeless. I think, for me, this film, and all his films, I think he just wants to make us work harder to keep hope alive for all people. I'm not going to give away the plot of the film. This film is a slow burn, but I just have to tell you when I watched it the, for the first time, the second time, it. it it tended to stay with me for weeks on end. 
I hope you really enjoy it. And I'm just really proud to be here. And I'm glad that it's the final film of the of this presentation. Thank you.